Okay. You're oh dressed as Eddie. Yes. <laughs> I am well, so honored. I get, a, I get a question. Yes. I, I, I'm trying to say you're wrong, but is your scar running the wrong way? I have it on the left eye. Is it supposed to be over the right? Because I've actually have heard it. Um, no, no. You're right. It's over. It is over. It's supposed to run left to right. That's yeah. how it's supposed to run. Okay, you're correct. Thank you, me. Uh, that that means a lot to me that I got the makeup right. Uh, how's the, the jacket? Does the jacket, yeah, the look? jacket looks great. Thank it's, you. I would show you the original, but it's out. It's out in a, a controlled uh, temperature room and in a box. And we are in the process of putting this whole house together. And when that happens, that vest will come out and go into a frame. I cannot but wait. I can't, I can't show you yet. No, it's it's totally fine. Fact, I have the original. I, I said, I'm taking this. Nobody said a word. <laughs> no, I, I would have done the same thing in your position. I've seen I've seen interviews. I think I took the, the thing, the slingshot, but I don't have a clue where that is. Oh, this? Yeah, I, I got this overseas. This, it's a Milbro original like slingshot. I looked it up, and that's what you use in the movie. So Yeah, I took I took that in the vest. You took that oh, in the vest? Sure. Yeah. I, 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 I you got anything. that? It's all... Yeah. I got my Eddie shirt. I got this. I even uh, went and found like a toy uh, saxophone. Now, everybody yeah. after, I'll tell you, everybody after I shot the movie, yes, they thought I could play the saxophone. You can't. No. No, oh, okay. I don't I have I I figured, know, I figured another clue. What I did was I got the saxophone player in the show out in LA because you know I did the show. Yes, yes. Okay. So I got the saxophone player before I left because I knew they I got the script and I saw him playing sax. So I got him to show me the fingering on the saxophone. And then I sawed off a broomstick uh -huh. and I put where I would have to put the it and I colored it. So I had to move it to the colors. So when I got to the saxophone, I I got the saxophone when I got there. And I had it for 10 days. So I was able to transfer how I fingered the broomstick to the saxophone. And, yeah. Yeah. and every, I miss one note. Only a saxophone player would know it. See, and that's, not, that's what I'm trying to get eventually is I'll slow down the movie so that I can try to match Well, up there's one mind. note wrong, but I don't remember where it is. Okay, well, that's there's what I'm one, trying There's one note that. fingering wrong, but all the fingering is absolutely correct for the solo. See, that's what I love about you, um, Meatloaf, is that you took the time as an actor to do the research and make it real. Well, you had to be, because, yeah. because Eddie could play the sax, and I'm Eddie, so even though I didn't really know how, when it came time to be Eddie, I heard the music, so... I was playing the sax. I know it's it's it, it's all about the truth. Acting is all about truth. So I heard the music. I thought I was playing it. You know. Yeah, and I I, I was watching the Q and A earlier, and you mentioned how you were with Tim Curry in the taxi cab for two hours, and how he taught you how to be in the moment, and that rings. Well, that no, that wasn't in the taxi cab. That was that was the third show that we did at the Roxy. Yes, third show. Excuse Third me. show, he changed how he said the opening line. And I, it felt like I was sitting there for two hours. I wasn't, but that's how it felt. Yes. And I'm going, I got to change this line. I got to figure out, I can't say the way I said it. And I'm screaming at myself. Right. And it was seconds, but I changed the way I said it. And I remember I laughed. I said, Well, Dr. R. R. Frankenfurter, yes. We meet at last. I remember exactly how I said it. See, and, that's and after that, he changed yeah. it all the time, so I was ready for it. So I didn't come on. That's that's how I learned not to come on expecting somebody in it because I hadn't done a movie yet. So in plays, they tend to say the lines the same way every night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I've, I've done theater too, uh, Meatloaf. So I, 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 I'm okay, sure. but what is what you need to do is you don't need to fall in that category. No. So I started going on stage after working with Tim 
And I had never said my line the same way twice. And they would, they, you, they'd look at you funny. Yeah. I, like The next thing I did, I think, was down at Cafe La Mama Experimental Theater. So that didn't, they just thought I was being experimental. And I wasn't. But I never have in a play after that said a line the same way twice. You know, it's funny. I actually did a, a uh, one of these videos that we're doing right now, but with um, Nell, with little Nell. And I told her I was going into this, and I still am a little bit uh, very nervous to speak with you because I I, ah. I I admire so much. I just I just bought your your bad out of hell vinyl, and I just found out I was listening to the musical. I didn't even realize that you had adapted it to a musical back in 2017. So I'm I'm getting into that as well. Um, yeah, the musical, I don't know. The musical was doing really well. And it started off slow with the audiences. The weekends were always full during the week. Uh, yeah, but it started picking up in New York. And it started to be full for six out of the eight shows. You, I've never done a play. There are plays, but I've never done one where six, eight out of eight shows is sold out. But there are shows like The Lion King, Disney. Yeah. You, it's like ridiculous. Or Hamilton was. Um, and I don't know why Cats was. I have no idea. <laughs> I have well, no idea. I have a few questions. Me, if you Okay, go ahead. Uh, just because our time is short. Um, I would ask you to do a little bit of hopitude, but I heard earlier that you had some... Uh, yeah, stories. whatever happened to Saturday night? You dressed up shop and you felt all right. And don't seem the same since cosmic light. Because and I'm gonna tell you something about that. Yes. When there'd only been one guy ever, I think two. I gotta hit this button again. Yes. There have been two guys play Eddie. So, oh God, what was his name? The musical director from London came over and we started on the song. He goes, Listen, if you can't get all the lyrics in, it's okay. Just yes. get we'll figure it. I said. What? What do you mean if I can't get all the lyrics in? I said, you can get all the lyrics in. Yeah. I said, you you got to know how to phrase. And so I went, okay, let's look at it. So I said, play it slow. We play. I said, whatever happened to Saturday night? I said, you just got to speed up. Whatever happened to Saturday night? Dressed up sharp. Dressed up sharp. Felt all right. You can do dressed up sharp fast. Felt all right. Uh, don't seem the same since cosmic light came into my life. I thought I was divine. So I got all the lyrics and he went, how'd you do that? I said, it's called phrasing. I said, I phrase like a saxophone anyway. And yeah. that's why like, uh, I'm bad out of hell. They didn't have that thing where they had moved your vocals around. So you'll see that it speeds up and slows down. And that's how, I rehearsed with them so they knew what was going on. And I phrased like a saxophone. If you've got an eight bar phrase, they always go, well, you're out of time. I'm going, I'm not out of time. Oh, <laughs> if I start on one yes, and eight bars later, I end on four, I'm in time. Right. And they go, well, what about the middle? I go, yeah, so what? Oh, I have arguments with these guys all the time. And I make sometimes they want to move, slide my vocals over so that they hit two and four, and they can't approach it. They can slide it, and I go, "Stop doing that!" I said, "Don't move that one. If you want that one to end on four, go ahead. I don't care." I said, "It's the one in the middle that counts." No, so, and, yeah. and that's what I love about music is that you can make it your own. You know how yeah. you sing it is totally different from how Andrew, uh, I believe it's Andrew Pollock, if I mispronounce his name. Yeah, I well, Andrew's great. He, he sings it a different way, and I love both of them. I love both ways. Andrew Andrew is a, a true actor. I don't believe he goes as far as I do where he totally loses conscious. I, I, I mean, I don't pass out, but I have no idea what I'm singing when I'm singing it. Because you're in the moment. You're like, you're dead. I don't. I can't hear it. I don't yeah. listen to it. So I get a flat note every once in a while, and you get these reviews. Oh, he hit like three or four flat notes. I don't know what he was doing. Yeah, and, and, and sometimes I lose time, but the band knows what's going on. And the, I got a band that can follow me if I fall behind. They just, okay, we're cool. And 
The only way I ever know, and I got to press the button again. No worries. I've recorded every show since 1986. They haven't all turned out. The tape's bad, the CD's bad, the hard disk didn't work. But the only way I know what happened the show before is that it's on tape. And I go to the venue six to, uh, five to six hours early, and I hear the show from before. And that's that's, like, that's, that's that's like you giving yourself notes. I love that. You're, you're self-reviewing. You're saying, oh, oh yeah, I give myself notes. And yeah. I go into the band. I go, don't ever let me do that again. And they go, how can you stop you? I said, just, I said, what do I have in my monitors? I don't have my voice, do I? I have the snare drum and the piano. My voice is in the side fills. So I don't care about it. I said, what happens is they push me. And instinct, well, I don't hear it. But I hear the snare drum. So if the snare drum pushes me, I'll go there. So I said, don't let me do that again. They go, how do we? I said, hit the snare drum harder. They go, oh, okay. I said, do a drum fill and come into one. So I did have one question because I asked uh, Nell this question. I want to hear your-, your I story. love Nell. I love Nell. She, she's a, such a sweetheart. How I do, love Nell and Barry to death. How, how do you feel Eddie met Columbia? How do you think that exchange for the first time? Oh, that's easy. Oh. That's easy. Eddie was a delivery boy that worked oh. down at the store, at the grocery store. And he delivered groceries to the house. And Nell was the girl that met him at the door. That met the so you always have to have a backstory. Oh, yeah. And and Nell and Eddie talked a lot in the beginning, and then they did a little more than talk. <laughs> there you go. I I feel that that could be its own musical. Honestly, I want that to happen for between me, you and Jim Steinman, or or even by yourself. I would love to see a Eddie musical because I feel like there's a lot that can be taught, you know, told with that. You know, I really feel strongly about it. I oh, love well, you have to start with Eddie because they, they sing the song Eddie's Teddy. Yes. Um, you know, when, when I sing it as Dr. Scott, from the day he was born, he was trouble. So you have to, you'd have to go back and let Eddie's Teddy be your whole catalyst to move forward. Since since you did Dr. Scott, I actually really want to hear what your Dr. Scott would have sounded like because I'm with you during the Q&A. You should have been Dr. Scott, hands down. Like, Well, uh, that made I more agree sense. with you and so does the director now, Jim Sharman. But at the time, they didn't. They wanted to give Jonathan, who is a narrator in London, they didn't want him to be left out of the movie. Mm -hmm. And they wanted and the re he should have been the narrator because yes. the guy being the narrator, Jonathan blew him away. Everybody says Jonathan hands down was so much better than that dude. And they said, well, we want to hire somebody that everybody knows. Who the hell knows that guy? Yeah, no one knows him now. I mean, I know him a little bit because of shock treatment, but I mean, that's only like 10% of the Rocky fans even watch shock treatment. So, oh, shock with treatment was the second movie, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and poor Richard, no, no, Richard doesn't talk to anybody. And I love to try to find him. I he didn't realize because I'm a huge uh, fan of the movie Wayne's World that you were tiny, right? Were you the character? Yes, I was tiny, the, the guy got the door at the guy. How was Mike Myers to work with? Was he, you know, like, did you enjoy working with Mike? Because I, I only, I only had him. That scene we timed it the other day was 27 seconds long, and the director did not want me to do that part. That part was bigger. And she shot it last, shot the thing. I got no close-ups, no two shots, no anything. And and they left me standing in the parking lot at 6 a.m. in the morning. That's, that's... Oh, it was horrible. But I like Mike Myers and Dana Carvey. I got a knock at my door and they said it's dinner time. And it was Mike Myers. Yeah. Telling me, me... You want to come to dinner and sit with dinner with me and uh, and um, Dana? Dana. Yeah. And so I sit and we had dinner for an hour and we talked and I asked him how it was going. And they apologized that that the scene that they were I was supposed to go on earlier. And they said the scene is running longer. And the guy driving the other car had an accident and blah, 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 blah. 
and they apologized. They were very apologetic and very nice. I'm happy for you. That at least they got that. I would have maybe Mike Myers is difficult, but he didn't seem so with me. Yeah, the fact that he came out, took a second, took you to dinner, and apologized to you. Yeah, I was. No, he didn't that, take me to huge. dinner. It was catering. Um, <laughs> he just asked me to come and sit with him. But then, that's the same thing. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, um, you were also in the, the Tenacious D musical, uh, Pick yeah. of Destiny. You played the dad. I love your part. Honestly, it's the part that next to Hoppatuti I watch on a loop because if you nail it, it's so good. Well, if I didn't become the people and stayed, if Meatloaf was anywhere inside him, yeah. I could have never ripped the posters down. They're my friends. Right, yeah. So Meatloaf did not exist in that thing at all. No. And that song, they said to me, can you come and just do, just put one down just real quick? I said, I got to go to bed. I'm going to Vegas. I got a big thing going on. And they said, just drop by and spend five minutes. So I did. And I sang this song. It wasn't that hard. And I sang about 15 minutes. And I said, well, let me fix that word. Okay, good. And they go, it's just a demo version for us to shoot with. I said, okay. That was the version. I did it in like five minutes. If you didn't set that up, though, the whole movie would have fell flat. You need like that. That is the catalyst. That's the. Well, let, let me tell you. I'm going to tell you how we got there. Okay, you ready? Yes. Um. I. I can't. Who? T who's today's team? Uh, uh, Jack. Jack Black. Jack Black. Good lord. I'm friends with Jack, and Jack, in the '90s before that movie, kept doing interviews and saying. I'm going to have Meatloaf do, be my dad. And they would, an interviewer would come to me and say, Jack Black says he's going to, he wants you to play his dad in the movie. I said, that'd be great. And it kept happening. And finally I said, well, the only way I'm going to do it now is if Jack Black calls me himself and asks me. And he did. Jack and he called me, yeah, wow. he called me up on the phone. He went, me, it's Jack. And you know how it is when you get on the phone and somebody says their name and you're going, hi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi, great. Yeah, how are you? And you're going, who is this? And you just tell you, you got a smile, your face is smiling. And you're going, yeah, well, how's your mom? Oh, she passed away 10 years ago. Oh, I forgot. And okay, well, well, you, you know, and you just get, and finally you go, oh, it's Jack Black. Oh, my God. And then you kick in, you know, and that's what happened. I was watching a football game. It was on a Sunday afternoon. Oh, uh. That's cool. I didn't know you were a football fan. I mean, I figured you were a baseball fan because I can see is that the uh, Orioles in the background. Yeah, I, grew, I grew up in. I, I'm a Cowboys fan. Oh, you're a Cowboys fan. I, 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 um, I believe it or not, I just noticed that I do not have a Cowboys jersey. I got a Cowboys helmet signed by a whole bunch of Hall of Fame Cowboys. I don't have a Cowboys jersey. That's absurd. Oh, speaking. Thanks of for telling me. Um. So I was talking to. Um, Nell about it. I don't know if you've uh, seen these before, Milof. These are uh, Pop Funkos. Yeah, I have one of me in the in the other room. Did they actually release release one of you? Because I've never. Yeah, found I've one. got them. I've got one. Do you have one for Eddie? Yeah. Wow, I've because uh, on the back package of this, they only have uh, they have Tim, they have Susan, Barry, Richard, uh, Patricia, and um, and Nell, but they don't have. As you can see right there, me, they don't have unless Eddie is not unless it's not Eddie, unless it is Fight Club or something. It's probably Fight Club then. I've never paid it. I just know it's in there. If I, I would got love a big head and it's that box. Yeah, I would love it if 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 you could release a meatloaf Funko Pop or well, a, you know what? We're we're tomorrow we're announcing an Amazon Meatloaf Amazon store uh -huh. for, for everywhere around the world. Wow. And, Every product that is meatloaf will only be in that store. There'll be not, none of those stupid bootleg albums. Yes. I, I, I don't know about them. And I go on Amazon and I go, where now did that come from? And we're getting rid of all those because Amazon, once you start the store, won't allow that. It'll come to us and we'll go, fuck you. See, and I love that. That means that I can, you know, if I want an official meatloaf shirt, I get it from you, not so. Yes. That's exactly correct. You know? That's exactly correct. And we'll probably offer them signed. I don't know. But I'm putting up tomorrow is 
today I left the announcement about this up. And I told everybody, they kept going, well, put it up. I'm going, no, not till Monday. So tomorrow we'll go up the announcement of the Amazon store. So they uh, won't officially really take, get into wheel gear until February. Up. I'm, just, I'm just going through all my questions. Uh, you've, you've answered just about all of them. The only one that I have left uh, me is, um, actually, it's, it's, it's funny enough. I'm actually getting married in, in March. Where do you live, drop. by the way? What's that? Where do you live? I live in San Diego. I live in San Diego, California. Oh, I like San Diego. Yeah. So uh, I'm getting married in in March, and I'm kind of nervous about it. I just I I know you, you know you've you've been okay. married. Let me just tell you advice. You. Stop for a second. I got one advice, and I'm telling you the truth, straight up. Crying out loud is the greatest love song ever, 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 ever written. And I would play that song. And you dance with your wife to that song. Because that song, remember what I talked about, about the truth? Yes. That's the only love song that honestly betrays the whole truth. Cry out loud. Nobody, oh. There's not a song out there that can touch it as far as a love song. Not I one. Every interview you've you've ever done, Meatloaf, I've always listened to all the way through. Your voice has just got such a uh, natural cadence. I love listening to you. Like, and I hate I can't listen to me at all. <laughs> there, there, we gotta go, babe. I gotta no, say I, to you. thank you so much, Meatloaf. All right, you're my hero, and I, I thank you, thank you, thank you for everything. For you're welcome. And last thing, yes, never sir. stop rocking. Right on. Merry Christmas, Meatloaf.